Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Oliver Perry Show. We've got another set of amazing guests today. I'm so excited to talk to them. These two gentlemen host a podcast called the Passive Money Podcast, also known as Passive Money on YouTube. They are not uh, financial professionals. They're not telling you exactly what to do. They're going to give you their experience. You're going to learn from them because that's been their focus for some time now is helping people learn how to improve their financial standing. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Kirby and Mr. Alex from Passive Money. Yeah, gentlemen, good. how you feeling? Good, good. good. All right. Good. All right, guys. I'm nervous about this one. Um, all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. Be nervous. <laughs> so check it out. So I just want to hop straight into it. And the idea behind this entire thing is to give people easy ways that they can improve their financial standing to get to multifamily real estate, just real estate in general, or whatever it might be. But before we hop into that, there is one thing that I need to find out first. All right, Alex, mm -hmm. Kirby once said that you are so frugal that you and your wife go out and share drinks. Is that still true? <laughs> that was never true. That was, <laughs> that, was, that was never true. That was never true. I, thought, I, say, though, I always get water, though. I always get water. It's the only free thing. Yeah, okay, my, that's my fair. Wife will be the one ordering. Yeah. That's fair. I just wanted to make sure and see if that's still a thing or not. I didn't want to judge. You know what I mean? <laughs> No, no, that was, that was never true. Uh, all right. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to chill out then. All right. It so, was close. It was close. It was close. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen. So how did you guys get started? How did you guys get started on your financial journey? And, and we'll take turns however you guys like. Matter of fact, let's start with Alex. Alex coming in. <clears throat> how did you get started on your financial journey specifically? How did you work that out? Um, it was kind of in two different parts. So the first part would be when I was uh, when I was 18, I had already been I had already had a online uh, business where I sold like military antiques. Right. Um, and so it kind of showed me a perspective that you can create income from something outside of a, you know, a nine to five job. So that really fascinated me. And I wanted to uh whether it was with that specific business or something else, I wanted to create income outside of just having to go and report to, you know, a boss or a, t a typical corporate job, something of that sort. So that kind of started my journey to thinking differently about money. Okay. And I just remember thinking to myself, this was when I was 18. So I remember thinking to myself, like, if I had enough money, I could, you know, essentially not have to go work for somebody. And I would say the second part to changing my mentality was meeting Kirby, actually, who's been uh, a great coach in my life, teaching me uh, different ways to actually create income, kind of laying out like a blueprint on uh, what it is that uh, is required to achieve success in that in that way. Um, but I would say the first, you know, the first way that I started thinking differently about money was just taking the time to actually think to myself, you know, where do I want to be in my future? And um, do I really want to be working at a job for 40 years like most of America does? Yeah, that's excellent. That's an excellent question to ask yourself. I ask myself that all the time, right as I put my yeah. uniform on. Uh, Kirby, what about you, man? Uh, well, uh, like you know, we both military. Uh, but I started my final jer financial journey off by being broke, actually. Um, I got out of the military in 2007 right at the height of the financial crisis okay and um and everybody was telling me when i got out oh you need to buy a house you need to buy a house that's when he was given the robo loans i bought a house well i actually built the house no proof of income right uh, yeah it was it <laughs> nice. was insane uh, so with that and then uh getting out right during the financial crisis you know couldn't find a job and the jobs i did find was paying like nine ten thousand an hour but i still had a 13 fourteen hundred dollar a month mortgage payment Wow, and then so I was just tired of being broke. So I just I was just you know robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know credit card transfers to credit card transfers, and then it went from there to it got to be a better way. And then one day I'm riding. I always listen to AM radio, and uh, I would listen to a guy. Everybody know who he is, Dave Ramsey on the radio. And um and then I and I thought it was an infomercial, but I only had I was only listening to AM radio, so I'll just ride and listen to it. And I'm saying this guy's a joke. This guy's a joke. He's full of it. And then I told myself, I'm going to listen to everything he says. And then he had a book out also. So I said, I'm going to read the book. I'm going to do everything he says. 
And then when it doesn't work, I'm going to call this radio station and cuss them out. And it, then I, I look at it now. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, <laughs> I look wait, at it now. Wait, Kirby, why are you so aggressive, man? What's going on? What's, <laughs> what's happening at this time? <laughs> And, and, and the thing was, was because I realized now being more mature, I was mad at myself. Mm. I wasn't mad at him. I was mad at myself for putting myself in that situation. Right. And then, but I had to blame somebody else at the time. I could, it couldn't be my fault. It had to be somebody else's. I get it. So I actually, I actually read the book in like a day and then I read it again. And I just started following everything he said to the letter. Cause of course, I, if it didn't work, I wanted to cuss him out. So I was going to follow everything to the letter. And that was like an epiphany in my life, honestly. That was honestly an epiphany in my life. It changed like overnight. So when, when I started doing it after a couple of weeks, I'm looking like this stuff really works. And right. then I just kept going and kept going. And that was how I first got into financial understanding. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. So then let me ask you this then, Kirby. Mm-hmm. What, what's, what's a few ways, and let's just start with one. What's one way that you've improved or that you use to improve your own financial standing? Uh, cut out expenses, cut out expenses as far as keeping up with the Joneses expenses, um, okay. things, the things like, so just for the record, me, I don't celebrate holidays. I never have, but that was something that I noticed a lot of people spend a lot of money on. Right. Uh, they go overboard. They go deeply into debt for birthdays, Christmases. If you have North Sweeties day, Thanksgiving, all of that. And then they put all that stuff on credit cards and they spend the rest of the year trying to pay it off to regurgitate and do that again year over year over year. Yeah. And those credit card bills, 18%. That's the best investment you could do is get out of consumer debt. But that was that was probably one of the biggest things I did. I, ne- I stopped trying to keep up with the Joneses. Everybody, when they had birthdays and stuff, they had to do big things. And then I, especially being in the military, okay, I got to do something. And then cut that out. That was a big way to save on finances and in a huge way actually i I, be, I believe it i believe it i've uh make sure my wife don't hear me so i'm going through the same thing right, right. All, right. all right don't kill me i'm scared okay all right all right alex what about you man what what about you what would you what are one thing that you did up to this point to ensure that you were doing better financially Yeah, um, I would actually go right off of what Kirby ended with. Um, And I have to thank them for uh, for teaching me how to say no to uh, people that are close to me. Mm -hmm. That was probably one of the hardest things. Uh, I grew up in a family where it's very much, um, you know, around the holiday times or birthdays, you're, you know, it's it's almost like an obligation or you're expected to give gifts Mm -hmm. and... uh, learning to cut that out especially telling friends i mean i would have friends ask to like pay for their college tuition and stuff so learning to say no to that you know just telling people no it, it's it's insane how the people closest to you will be the ones with their hands out first but uh learning to cut that out first can can save you a lot of money so let's let's do- all right so let's dive into that a little bit because that's that's a really good one i didn't think about that what did you learn what was the key part of that learning and, and how did you go through that process to figure it out as Kirby was kind of giving you the guidelines? What did I learn? Can you repeat that? Again? Yeah, of course. Of course. What did you figure out from what Kirby was teaching you? What are the the key things that you took away from Kirby teaching you on how to do that? <laughs> it's going to sound kind of dark, but, uh, in, there's a lot of truth to this in a sense in a way if people and i'm not saying maybe not for all families Mm -hmm. but if people actually think like if if someone is starting a business or they're starting to be financially well with their money responsible investing they're making a sacrifice and they have to understand that the people that may ask them for money aren't making the same sacrifice as them. And why should they feel obligated to give money out to those same people? And most of the time, those people are your friends, your family, uh, like I said, the people closest to you. So saying no to them, because a lot of times they really just don't understand the sacrifice you're making. But I mean, I've sacrificed a lot of, you know, say, eating out or going on trips right uh you know i know people that go to we live in florida so i know people that go to 
Disney and Busch Gardens like every weekend. Um, right. So, you know, I, I don't do that, you know what I mean? So if those same people are the ones asking for money, mm-hmm. but not willing to make the same sacrifices that I'm making and my wife are making, then uh, why should I continue to give them money? 